Welcome everyone. Um, please do let us know where you're tuning in from in the Q&A box as we get going. Um, I'm just going to let a few more people come in because I can see the number count going up steady. Welcome everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Wilgress from Arise, a festival of left ideas. And um, I welcome you to this discussion we've called tonight. And um, we're delighted to have so many of you with us. We've had well over 500 registering in advance and thousands more likely to see us on social media tonight at such short notice. Thank you very much for your interest in this event. Um, we are all here tonight to say that we must stand up for Labour Party democracy and to say that the attack on Jeremy Corbyn is part of a wider assault on democracy within Labour that must be opposed. Responding to the news last week of the Labour NEC endorsing Keir Starmer's move to bar Jeremy Corbyn from being able to stand to be their candidate in the next election, Islington North constituency Labour Party issued the following statement. Local party members should select their candidates for every election. The officers of Islington North CLP strongly support this statement from Keir Starmer in February 2020. We believe in the democratic rights of all constituency parties to choose their prospective parliamentary candidate. Therefore, we reject the NEC's undue interference in Islington North, which undermines our goal of defeating the Conservatives and working within our communities for social justice. Since that statement was issued, thousands of Labour members and affiliated union members have added their support to a petition which includes a demand that let says, let Islington North's members decide their candidate. Whilst the motion was railroaded through the NEC, it's important to note it did meet widespread opposition, including from numerous affiliated unions who voted against the motion, including Unite, the CW, ASLEF, the FBU and the TSSA, the Unison Union abstained. This response from unions is also illustrative of grave concerns that are growing across not just the unions, but the whole of our movement at the continual attacks on democracy within the Labour Party. The examples which other speakers will go into are too numerous to list here, but they include a block on letting members choose their own candidate in numerous other constituencies as well, the failure to implement the Ford report, the attempts to gag the elected young Labour representatives by taking away access to their Twitter and Facebook accounts, and much more besides. But we're here tonight, we need to also realise that it isn't just enough to oppose those attacks. On the left, we need to work together more consciously, proactively, and cooperatively to present a unified response and put forward a different vision of what a democratic party and a democratic movement could look like. Such a movement that would help Labour win, including through the development and promotion of popular policies. That's why we've taken this initiative today in bringing together different parts of the left, an important discussion on these matters and our next steps. Please also make sure in the Q&A box to put your comments as well as where you're from so that we can have as many of these published and read out during the meeting as possible. And um, thank you then everyone for coming. I know in many places tonight, including in Islington itself, people have ward meetings to get to. And I promise that this discussion tonight will not be the end either of our discussion or action on these vital issues. In particular, make sure you've signed a petition on change.org about the Islington North situation so you receive direct and regular updates on that. And also, if you've registered for the event tonight, keep an eye out for a model motion coming on this issue, which we will be seeking to work with a range of different bodies on the left on in the next days. As we move on to our speakers, as I've said, please not only tell us where you're tuning in from in the Q&A, and I'll give as many shout outs as I can, but also give us your comments so they can be shared throughout to the audience and the speakers. Please also donate if you can to the hosting costs and take note of other action notes posted by our volunteers. I'm delighted about any further ado now to move on to our speakers. Our first speaker needs a little introduction to many of you. It's Nabia Molana, Chair of Young Labour, a great friend of Arise, and we're really delighted as ever to have you with us today. Welcome, Nabia. Thank you very much, Matt. I'm usually quite glad to be on a call for Left Lefties, but it's actually incredibly disappointing that we're having to host a call like this at all. Like thousands of other young people, I grew up in Tory Britain, and whilst it was challenging to grow up as a young person in the UK, it was especially challenging to grow up as a young person of colour. 
you're overrepresented in the criminal justice system, but you're underrepresented in the employment market. You're more likely to get excluded from school and you're less likely to you know, receive a decent grade at university. And if you manage to secure a job, you're certainly not getting promoted anytime soon. Over half of our households live in poverty and often in the poorest areas. Now for a country where your postcode still determines so much of your future, this is quite damning. Now it always seemed like the odds were constantly stacked against us and politicians weren't really offering solutions or supporting anti-racist movements. In some cases, they were fueling the racism. And like many, many others, I was convinced that no political party would offer meaningful change. So you can imagine my surprise when I saw Labour's manifesto at the 2017 general election. And when I saw just how close the country came to electing a socialist Labour government. You know, people had chosen a politics of hope. And Jeremy Corbyn reminded people that a world that worked for the many was possible if only we were brave enough to fight for it. And I remember like thousands of young lefties at the time, I was incredibly inspired by Corbyn and I was inspired by his message. And, you know, I remember thinking to myself, well, if he has spent decades fighting for what he believed in, simply because it was the right thing to do, then surely so could I. And I joined the Labour Party. And at the last general election, there were 100,000 young people who had joined the party. Now, these weren't just young members who, you know, just paid their dues. These were members who were actively involved in the party and they were determined to play their role in delivering a Labour victory. The party had delivered a manifesto that would have changed our futures for generations to come. And so we do not. We phone banged and we delivered leaflets. We spoke to our friends, our families and our neighbours all because we believed that a world that worked for the many was very much within grasp and that a Labour government led by Jeremy Corbyn would be part of this. And from what we've seen over the last few months, over the last three years, I think, you know, it's OK to be really, really clear and say this isn't just an attack on Jeremy. This is an attack on the left of the party and our socialist beliefs. You know, we have a few who are at the very top of the party who are trying to send us a message that says that, you know, they don't want us here. And whilst the Tories are waging a class war and doing everything in their power to erode our civil liberties, we have people in the Labour Party doing everything possible to quash their own left wing. You know, they've tried to erode our political confidence, they've tried to sow despair and really make us question our place in the party. And, you know, I look back uh, part of the party now and I actually find it unbelievable that this was the party I joined with with so much hope and I have to remind myself that actually this is you know this is why they do the things they do this is this is it's all completely intentional you know they they think that if they treat us really poorly um, and if they constantly show us time and time again that they don't want us here that will retreat from politics and that will re re retreat from sustained political organizing. But, you know, they're wrong because young people, we know that we can't let apathy and despondency find footholds in our communities. After 13 years of Tory austerity, I think we're all pretty resolute that we don't want to be on a losing side of the class war forever. And I think particularly for my generation and for young labor, like. Our choices are clear. We either organise together to turn things around and transform our society, or we pay the price of a diminished life. And, you know, time and time again, young people in the party have elected the left to lead young Labour, sending a clear message that the future will be socialist. And so whenever I find myself in those moments of frustration, if the moments of sadness even, and sometimes in moments of just pure rage, you know, I have to remind myself that we can't let anyone stamp out our flames of hope because we know that a hopeful generation will be a generation that brings about the change we, we so desperately need. So, you know, they can laugh at us for having chanted, oh, Jeremy Corbyn, or they can try to shun Jeremy from public life. But 
the ideas in Hopi Inspired will stay with our generation and the generations that follow. You know, from the NHS to the welfare state and public education, the labour movement has surmounted and really won over difficult conditions before. You know, I mean, the party was created to be the political extension of the trade union movement because we truly believed that this party was able to bring about meaningful change. And we know that we can build a Labour Party that brings about that change. We've done it before. You know, we can build a party that is firm in our stances against racism and all forms of bigotry. A party that champions policies like a Green New Deal, a pu like public ownership, universal health care and free education. And a party that never forgets our trade union roots and is unapologetic about standing with striking workers. Because as Zara Sultana loves to say, the clue is in the name. We are unapologetically on the side of Labour. Ultimately, for me, this is the party I joined because I truly believe that this was the party that was worth investing time in, that would, you know, speak for my communities, that would speak for my generation, because this is the party that was founded to represent us. And Islington North should be free to choose Jeremy as their representative, just like they have for the past 40 years. But no matter what happens over the next few weeks and the next few months, I think, you know, no matter what they do to try and push Jeremy out or make life difficult for the left, I think it's really, really important that we remember quite a simple truth, actually. Um, and that's they can try and cut all the flowers, but ultimately, you know, they, they can't stop spring from coming. And I think we just need to come together. We need to really organise and we need to try and develop a real vision for the left, you know, what it means to have socialist policies, what socialist policies mean for this country. And as the left, we need to be able to articulate that really clearly in our communities, in our workplaces um, and right across the country. And there will come a day again when, when we do win the Labour Party and when we do have a socialist Labour government. Um, and so on to then, comrades, I look forward to organising with all of you over the next few months um, and over the next few years to, to deliver a really meaningful Labour government. Thank you, Nabir, and thank you for all the work you do and for all the work that the Socialist Future comrades do in Young Labour and Labour students on so many important issues such as fighting for free education and so on. And we're about to move on to a little announcement from one of the volunteer organisers. But just quickly before that, so many of you joining to see thousands of people coming online with us tonight is giving me some much needed hope. Um, and I just wanted to a say, read out a message from David Watson, who says, greetings from Norway, saddened by the developments in my native country and the continuing tax on Jeremy Corbyn and basic democratic principles and I think the fact you've got socialists from all over the world tuning in here and saying how much they stand by the right of his and North selected candidates and all the things Jeremy's done as an MP is really quite something. The other thing I was going to mention was I can actually see the back of the change.org petition which is getting very close to 70,000 that I mentioned at the start. Everyone on this call and everyone on the stream signs that now who hasn't done and do double check that you have because obviously this is the kind of issue lots of petitions go around on please do share and sign that now as we're going to keep that number up and also um i wanted to answer a particular question which is from amanda bentham who says greetings from hackney north and stoke newington are there any proposals for model motions and affiliated unions particularly unison whose representatives on the nec abstained um, amanda my understanding is there will be something specific in unison people involved with Time for Real Change are doing, and I will try and get that to you. I've got your contact details, but also we will be doing a general motion and be used to unions as well as Labour parties out of this meeting. So if you've registered for today, then you will get that in the coming period. And um, I'm now going to move on to a very quick announcement from Fraser Maguire, who is uh, one of the volunteers who helped her on this meeting today and also on the Young Labour National Committee. Uh, Fraser, over to you. Um, thank you very much to everyone who's watching this event. Uh, it's an incredibly important online event, and it's only by coming together like this to discuss the fight back against the continuing erosion of Labour Party democracy um, that we can really start to resist Starmer's assault on the left and the party grassroots. Uh, please sign the petition to let Islington North members decide who should represent them at the next general election. Uh, that petition will be posted down in the chat now.
uh, now's the most important time, really, that we're able to have this conversation, as it's now that we're seeing Jeremy and other left wing and local candidates being blocked across the country from standing to be parliamentary candidates. We're only able to hold important narrative shaping events like this with the support of people like you watching tonight. Online events like this can cost £300 to put on. If, pe if 15 people donated £20 each, we'd be able to completely cover the cost of tonight's meeting. I'd ask everyone watching, if possible, if you've got a small amount of money, we know there's a cost of living crisis on, but please donate on the link in the chat, as it's incredibly important as the left that we're able to hold events like this tonight. Thank you, Fraser, and also thank you to Gary, Michael and the other people signing the petition after that little shout out I gave. Um, our next speaker is Neil Finlay, former MSP, uh, supported a campaign for socialism in Scotland and a tireless campaigner for the rights of working people and our unions. Neil, over to you. Great to have you with us tonight. Uh, thanks very much, comrades, and good evening, and uh, thanks for the invitation to speak at this important uh, topic of let the members decide. I have to say letting the members of any membership organisation decide how it's run and who represents it sounds like a very uncontroversial or radical idea. I think uh, whether it's the Girl Guides, the RSPB or the Labour Party, we join an organisation because we share its values, we have its uh, an interest in its objectives and we want a say in how it's run. This is, to me, is not a revolutionary concept, I have to say. It should be the normal state of affairs. And uh, against that background, um, then this event comes uh, just a day after uh, the leader of our membership organisation told the Times newspaper uh, that he had made some uh, pretty ruthless decisions, including removing uh, the leader of the Scottish Labour Party. Now, we already knew that he removed uh, Richard Leonard, the former leader, elected by the members of this party. But this is the first time Starmer's actually admitted it publicly. Indeed, not just, I would say, admitted it, but appeared to brag about it. But that's not the whole story, of course. Leonard was removed following several years of relentless, brutal uh, and shameful campaigning to undermine him by the right wing of this party, who never accepted him in the first place. He was subjected to repeated leaks, briefings against them, media attacks, public attacks, attacks on staff and colleagues, lies and smears and duplicity. Sound familiar, anybody? Uh, and all of this culminated uh, with those heroes of democracy and socialism, a group of wealthy party donors and openly hostile, unelected Scottish peers in that bastion of democracy in the House of Lords telling Stammer to move, remove Richard Leonard as leader or they wouldn't provide any more money to Labour. So he did. So we've had cash for questions. This was cash for sackings. But of course, um, this was only the start of a series of hostile actions. We now see candidates blocked, selection, CLP selection committees resigning, respected figures told they cannot stand. And this is happening in Scotland too with um, Councillor Matt Kerr, a long-standing uh, activist uh, and councillor blocked, uh, blocked from uh, putting his name forward as a candidate. He's the same Matt Kerr who came within 3,000 votes of becoming the Scottish Party's deputy, deputy leader. And who was it that blocked him? Well, it was one Jackie Bailey who won the deputy leader contest and went on to chair the committee approving candidates. Nothing to see here, of course. Uh, and at that, on all that time that this was going on, we saw the welcome map being rolled out for the flinching cowards and sneering traitors of Change UK, who not only left the party, but stood against Labour candidates at the election a punishment that normally results in expulsion and no way back for those people. Comes, I have to say, even under the Kinnock witch hunt, under Blair, they didn't go this far. And this leads me to this question. If Starmer and his henchmen and women act like this in opposition, then what are they capable of with power in their hands? 
Uh, we've already seen what he's done with his infamous 10 pledges, almost all of them shredded, reneged upon or dumped. Uh, they were a con, an illusion, a charade perpetrated against their members. We see what he's done in policy uh, towards refugees, on privatisation in the NHS, economic policy, his ludicrous drugs policy. And we know what he did to my friend and yours, uh, Jeremy Corbyn. The list goes on and on. Uh, this is a Labour leader with no principles that he is not prepared to ditch. And now, I have to say this, I know here I'm largely speaking to the converted and to an echo chamber of people who will largely share uh, my analysis. Um, and, and comrades, with respect to many long-standing friends, I have to say that takes us not a millimetre forward. I'm of the belief your best friends are the people who tell you what you don't want to hear, not people who just nod and agree. So in that spirit, we have to face up to what is the challenge in front of us. Last year, I published a book which took its title from a rallying call from the great miners leader, Michael Magaki, who said, if you don't run, they can't chase you. And my question to the left and the trade unions within the party and the left in parliament is this, when are we going to stop running? When are we going to face up to those who are chasing us out of our party? When are we going to see a coherent collective response? When are we going to see some leadership from the parliamentary left and those of us outside the parliament? When are we going to see an end to our collective depression, victimhood and period of self-pity? The attack on our members, elected representatives, constituency parties, trade unions and potential candidates is an attack on democracy and on all of us. And finally, our membership cards say the Labour Party is a democratic socialist party. Well, what is going on is neither socialist nor democratic, but it is also tactically inept and electorally stupid. As I said already, the question for us is what are we going to do but do about it? And when are we all got just going to stop running? Thanks. Thanks, Neil. And I think so many points I'd agree with there and so many important points to make. Um, I think we need to be asserting our position on the left. We need to be asserting our position collectively and strongly. And I've noticed just on the things I'm doing this last week, you know, we strongly spoke up on this isn't North Matter and on Jeremy. And um, people want that kind of lead. And I think it's important for all the left that's in the party and people supportive of Jeremy beyond the move to the party of course as well to speak together as much as we can with one voice to organise together on this and so many other issues around democracy and social policy together consciously and loudly so that we're giving that lead and I'm just looking at the Q&A box and it's great to have so many people commenting in there and with so many thousands on the call it's so good to look at them. Um, someone is asking about joining the Peace and Justice Project just to say, a rise festival supports the Peace and Justice Project. Um, hopefully, one of the volunteers can post a link to join in the chat. And please do do that. Jeremy's very important initiative that's been going a couple of years now. I um, also wanted to flag up this excellent question that's more of a comment from Eric Jarvis, who says, "Why would anyone believe that it's possible to create a coalition ideologically wide enough to beat the Tories without democratic decision making on everything at every level?" And I think that's exactly right. Party democracy and help build a coalition, not just to defeat the Tories, but build a better society. It also heads up to um, some of the public sector workers, teachers, firefighters and others on the calls who are, who are campaigning against the cuts and welcoming Jeremy's support for their picket lines. I um, also wanted to look at this comment from Carol, who says, I'm involved in lots of socialist groups. Believe me, there are many of us. We want a lead to bring us all together. Socialism is not dead. We are still out there. We still believe. I think that's so important. Now's the time us to reassert that we are here and that we are fighting for socialism that we are fighting on those picket lines and we are fighting for party democracy also just a real big shout out for the people who are making donations it does make a big difference um thank you susan michael kate gavin veronica colin and david who've all made donations in response to fraser's shout out there and just for people who don't know before I introduce our next speaker, Fraser was one of the student occupiers at the University of Manchester recently on rent. And if you saw pictures of someone being removed forcibly in the early hours of the morning by like six or seven bailiffs, 
um, just for protesting for fair rents at university. That was for ASA, so our greetings to him and all his fellow campaigners. Um, and now I move on to someone who I think we can all agree is absolutely a formidable campaigner for many years for democracy in the Labour Party. That's the perspective of being a former NEC member and the co-chair of the Campaign for Labour Party Democracy. Thank you for joining us, Rachel Garner. Thanks, Matt, and um, thanks to Arise for, for once again being at the forefront of uh, campaigning on the key issues that we face as a Labour movement and um, inviting me to speak on this important topic and um, alongside such inspiring comrades from across the movement. So as co-chair of the Campaign for Labour Party Democracy, obviously this is a topic very close to my heart um, that we've been campaigning on. This is our 50th year of uh, campaigning for uh, the rights of CLPs and members to select their par parliamentary candidates. And we have seen some, some ebbs and flows over that time. Um, the very first meeting of the, the Labour left that I ever went to as a, a teenager was um, a meeting of Sheffield Socialist Campaign Group discussing the case of, of Liz Davis, who had been selected by Leeds North East in 1995 as prospective parliamentary candidate, but was denied endorsement by the NEC on a, a series of, of trumped up charges. So the right of the Labour Party has a, a long and shameful history of denying members' rights, um, because when you let members decide, you get candidates who genuinely represent local communities, not people who've decided they want to be an MP and then decided which party it's most expedient to join. You get candidates, if you let members decide, genuinely rooted in their communities, in their trade unions, in their social movements, people who've acted for the common good and not for electoral, or not for personal gain, um, and candidates who will bring the voice of the community to parliament, which is what we need, not the voice of the establishment into communities. Um, we get candidates who won't be controlled, and that's exactly what we want to see in Parliament. Um, so in CLPD, we, we support members, um, by which I mean grassroots members of the Labour Party in CLPs and affiliated members in trade unions, deciding on all issues relating to Labour policy, selections, elections and organisational structures. And, and for this, there is widespread support um, in the Labour Party going well beyond the left. And, and that's why they like to shut down CLPs, because actually the vast majority of members do support the, the right of members to decide on policy and on candidates. And so we do need to build alliances across the party for, for members' rights. Um, in terms of priorities, at our recent CLPD AGM, the first, the very first motion on our agenda um, was that our immediate focus would be on trying to achieve a fair and just resolution of the disgraceful way that Jeremy Corbyn has been treated within our party and trying to ensure that Jeremy would be able to stand as a Labour candidate at the next general election. And that was a commitment to build on the rule changes that we br brought to the um, com annual conference in 2022 and 2021, which many CLPs picked up from across the movement, not just in Islington and London, which would have allowed members in Islington North to select the candidate of their choice. And of course, everything, everything possible was thrown against those rule changes. Um, and in, including um, the prevention of CLPs actually debating these issues. Um, people will remember when Jeremy was first suspended, there was an, a, a rightly enormous outcry and secretaries and chairs of CLPs were suspended for even allowing their constituencies to discuss the issue. They are scared <laughs> of, of, of letting members have a voice. Um, so the the right of candidate the right of CLPs to select candidates is um, you know absolutely fundamental to Labour Party democracy, but it's also fundamental to Labour's electoral support. Um, and there have been some very uh, disappointing polls uh, today showing how Starmer is losing the support of even Labour voters. And and this ongoing treatment of Jeremy is not going to help that. Um, there is really strong evidence for the, from um, Blair's period of control freakery in hand picking candidates. So in Blano Gwent, in Falkirk West, and most famously in the, the first election for the position of mayor of London, the imposed candidates from the leadership lost and the people who had the support of Labour members and trade unions won. But it seems like these lessons are being forgotten and I and may need to be relearned. So for me, it's the 
you know, the electoral advantage of having a candidate supported by members is incredibly strong. But uh, one of the additional arguments we heard at the the CLPD AGM, which, you know, did resonate um, with me as well, was that um, as members, when Jeremy was leader, he stood by us and it is our turn to stand by him and continue to make the case to let members decide. So um, I spoke at a a Labour Women Leading event at the weekend about the importance of hearing women members' voices in the party against the running down of our organisational structures, against the running down of of women's conference and noting that... um, the disabled members um, structures and the structures for black, Asian and minority ethnic members have essentially been strangled at birth. They will not um, be implemented despite being in the rule book um, and letting um, members in letting um, women and black and Asian minority ethnic and disabled members decide on our policy as it impacts us is fundamental. But um, so in, in talking about that, I I revisited the democracy review that Jeremy sort of was behind in 2018, obviously led by Katie Clark. And um, it said, we are looking at how a hugely expanded membership becomes a mass movement which can transform our society. We want to reach into communities to remove barriers to getting involved, to become a people powered movement for change. To become a mass movement, Labour needs to listen to local people and communities in all parts of the country to involve all members, whether they've just joined or been with us for decades and get many more to join as we build a transformational movement. I think that remains as true today as it was then. And that is what Jeremy tried to achieve as Labour leader and why he was so dangerous to the establishment who held hold the wealth and power in this country, who were challenged by Jeremy. And sadly, they now also hold the Labour leadership. So so where do we go from here? There's a lot of questions on that in, in the Q&A. Um, obviously, members in Islington North would be best placed to decide if any of the, the mud slung at Jeremy Corbyn warrants a change in representation for their constituency from the, the Member of Parliament who has served constituents so well, who is at the heart of his community and who has always put the people of Islington North first. It's not too late for that to happen. Um as I mentioned earlier, I'm strongly reminded of, of when Ken Livingstone was denied the right to stand as Labour's candidate for London Mayor in 2000, despite the support of Labour members and trade unions. And eventually common sense prevail, prevailed and Ken was restored to party membership and won in 2004 as the Labour candidate. So I continue to live in hope that common sense will prevail and Jeremy Corbyn will be restored to his rightful position as a Labour MP. Um, and when I hear Nabila speak and when I see photos of (laughs) Fraser being removed from a building fighting for the rights of young people I very much agree with what um, Nabila said Um, you can cut all the flowers but you cannot keep spring from coming we have to fight on and um, thanks for inviting me. Thank you Rachel Um, and thank everyone who's putting things in the Q&A I like this one from uh, Iggy, who says on behalf of her, she's typing on behalf of her 93-year-old mum who's been uh, questioning Keir Starmer's common sense and says that we must all remember it's a long road, but stay together, we will get there. And that's what we are all about and that's what we're trying to do. Also great to see so many positive comments about Neil and his contribution and also just great to have Neil on this uh, event tonight and calling for better coordination on the left. Um, Neil, it's great to have you with us. Again, I'd also like to just quickly thank various people um, in terms of donations coming in. Thank you to Anne, Robert, Michael, Michelle, Paul, Susie and Moira since the last batch. Please do keep them coming in. It does help us do these events and also our related campaigning. Um, also, just to say the petition is going up very nicely as the meeting goes on. Um, it's just about to hit 67,400. Um, I've seen two people signed in the last 10 seconds. If you're on the call, Deborah and Bernard, thanks a lot. Please also share that petition and the graphic for that petition. That's the best way to get as many people on as possible. And also, if you're on the call and you're watching on the stream, or even if you're not, but you've got your phone to hand, please retweet the stream and also Facebook share the stream. Because these are the things that make such a big difference to the thousand numbers of people joining us, including the thousands right now. Um, as I said, our meeting today is about bringing together different voices from the left. So it's absolutely great now to have Martin Abrams of the Momentum National coordinating group. Um, A lot of you may have seen him on the media recently doing some interviews, becoming 
quite the media star and a great voice for party democracy. Martin, thanks for the momentum support for the meeting tonight. And thank you for joining us. Thanks, Matt, and uh, solidarity with everyone joining the call tonight. It's great to see so many people on the call, and it's an honour to, uh, to to share the podium with uh, with such uh, some uh, fantastic speakers as well. So, my name is Martin Abrams. Uh, as Matt said, I'm I'm on Momentum's uh, national coordinating group. Um, I've got a few hats though, because uh, I'm also a Labour Party councillor in Lambeth and my day job is uh, is working for RMT union and um you know over the course of the past sort of 12 months my heart has swelled with pride with being part of that union and part of a fighting union that has really taken the fight to the government and um you know whilst we might not have achieved everything that we wanted to achieve um for our network rail members we've we've fought for as good a deal as possible and uh, we'll continue fighting for our, our members uh, on the train operating companies. But I really hope that um, the approach that we've taken at RMT has really sparked um, a bit of life into the Labour movement um, and some much needed um, life as, 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 as well, because, um, you know, the, the attacks on, on the left and, and, and members of the Labour movement and those of us in the Labour Party um, have been absolutely despicable over recent years. And, and, and what we saw last week was, was an outrageous attack, not just on a good man, a Labour Party member of 50 years and MP for Islington North for over 40 years. It was, it was an attack on democracy itself. And the, the bizarre NEC motion that was brought um, uh, it, it was because Keir Starmer essentially knew that Jeremy Corbyn would wipe the floor with any other candidates in any selection contest, because he is a fantastic constituency MP, and he's got a, he's got a, an amazing relationship with um, with his with his constituency party. And let's face it, Keir Starmer did not have the guts to let members decide, like he didn't have the guts to stand on his own platform at the leadership election, because he knew deep down that if he stood on his own platform. He would have done worse than Liz Kendall did in 2015. He'd, he would have got less than 4%. And, um, you know, as Jeremy himself has said, it's an attack on Labour members' right to choose their own candidate without NEC interference. And that right was promised specifically by Keir Starmer. And everyone's seen the tweet. He promised specifically to stop those top-down uh, in positions of candidates. And, and that's why we must support Islington North CLP uh, members and the CLP exec, which has called for members to decide, and we must support that petition and the campaign to get Jeremy Corbyn reinstated. Um, because if the vote had been among members and trade union reps on the NEC alone, um, Starmer's motion would have fallen. He had to rely on um, on, on other members of the NEC that, um, that obviously don't represent the grassroots of the party. And that's why momentum is fully back in the call for the NEC um, to rescind this decision. But let's be clear, this is part of a wider assault on democracy within Labour under Starmer. And it's another step in a rolling coup against members under his leadership. And yesterday we just passed the three year anniversary of Keir's time in charge. And it, um, it was it, it was interesting because uh, We've got a really good social media team at Momentum and, and yesterday they published a thread of every single one of Keir's broken promises, not just on policy, but on party unity. And let's remember, he promised to democratise policymaking, but instead we've seen conference motions for public ownership, wealth taxes and strike solidarity completely ignored. Keir Starmer promised to end factualism, but instead we've seen waves of prescriptions, suspensions and expulsions and constant attacks on the left. And that includes the frankly Orwellian retroactive prescription rules, whereby members, including Unison's very own president, have been expelled simply for liking social media posts from a prescribed group, even be before prescription. He promised not to trust the past four years uh, and has proceeded to do that at every turn, erasing the 2017 election and the positive changes we saw within the party in the Corbyn years. It's almost as if 2017 didn't exist for centrists. You know, it's not part of, their, of the centrist calendar anymore. And he praised Labour's mass membership, 
before going on to alienate hundreds of thousands of ordinary members and instead embrace corporate donors instead. And it's important to remember that there is no democratic mandate for this. He did not stand on this platform and there's no constituency for this elite project beyond the CBI and the Murdoch press. And there's a reason they had to lie their way to power and, and it's that no one actually wants reheated Blairism. It is simply not up to dealing with the crises of today. So, I mean, what work has Momentum been doing to resist this purge? I mean, throughout this time, it's been, let's, let's face it, comrades, it has been really, really difficult. But throughout this time, Momentum has been working hard alongside allies to resist this purge on the left as much as we possibly can. In 2020, our national coordinating group set up a free support service for wrongly suspended members, a service we've kept up ever since. We've organised to elect socialists to Labour's democratic bodies from the NEC to the, the NCC who work hard to limit the extremes of this, let's face it, Stalinist purge. And we've spoken out against this purge at every turn and played a leading role in exposing Starmer selection stitch-ups in the national press, helping to force an important concession last week. But we understand it's really tough right now. And many socialists, uh, uh, many very good socialists have left Labour or been expelled. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, such uh, um, like I said, many have not been given the choice, given the unfair expulsions we've seen, particularly and shamefully, of Jewish left, left wingers. Um, I'm a Jewish Labour Party member and you know, I'm 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 sitting on this call, uh, you know, living on my Labour Party membership day by day. You know, who knows how uh, how how you know uh, Labour HQ might react to a Labour Party councillor simply uh, joining a Zoom call of fellow left comrades and um, speaking out, such as I am today. But listen, there is huge positive value to uh, continue to organise through uh, the Labour Party and momentum. It's important, though, for us to say that there, that there is much more that activists can achieve um, um, through momentum in the Labour Party for the long socialist struggle. struggle. On Sunday, we held the first in a series of organising roadshow events in Worthing aimed at bolstering our local bases within and through Labour. And we're going to, like I said, we've been to Worthing, we're going to Wandsworth, we're going to Preston, and socialists in local government are... Um, pioneering a community wealth building approach and showing that it is the left that delivers for working class communities. We have got the ideas, we have got the energy, we know how to change our communities and we want to showcase these successes and build on them, strengthening our local bases at the same time. Um, so uh, tough as it is, I really want to encourage every single person on this call to stay in the Labour Party, uh, stay in Momentum or join us if you are not a member already and you know as well as uh, some of the uh, road shows that we'll be doing we'll be campaigning for some flagship socialist policies in the run-up to uh, Labour's uh, next election man manifesto policies which we know enjoy enormous support from across political parties um, and, and, and across the Labour movement and, and if and when there is a Labour government. The left has a crucial role to play, both in the party, in the PLP, and out there shaping public opinion. Because from the climate crisis to energy to wages, the status quo will simply not cut it. And a milk toast reheated Blairism won't solve the huge crises our country faces. So, comrades, let me leave you with this message. Let's not exile ourselves from the Labour movement, especially from the crucial elections ongoing in various unions, such as Unite and Unison at the moment. Instead, let's get organised. Solidarity. Thank you, Martin. And uh, solidarity to you with your RMT hat as well. Um, the wave of class struggle at the RMT sort of sparked nearly a year ago now, still goes on, and something that's so important for us it's not just look internally at the Labour Party, look beyond it, look at society, look at the class struggle, organise in your communities. Um, you know, if you feel like you're knocking on a door that's not going anywhere in Labour, then do do other things with your time. Um, that's just common sense in my opinion. Um, I'm just going to read out some comments before we go to the wonderful Jess Barnard. Um, good comment here from Mark Gladbrook, who a lot of you will know, who, who points out that the representative socialist society is on the NEC voted to deny Sington North CLP the right to renominate their own MP. 
If you're a member of one of these social societies, why not directly contact them and ask how and why this decision was made? Nigel Johnson has made a number of good points in the chat about how we can concretely bring pressure to bear on the Jeremy decision and others and ask if the unions are going to apply any financial pressure. And I think that relates to what Amanda was saying earlier about the need to put pressure on in unions such as Unison on this matter. And um, also Deborah has made some important comments and questions. And um, one which she is saying is what can we do other than a change to org petition challenge the NEC's decision? And um, there's also a specific isn't an action in the in the um chat that people should do but also as i said we are going to be providing some model motions and other campaign materials in the next week so we're seeking to bring together the coalition of people support this meeting and others to do um and on that point i do think it's also important that we realize that this isn't just you know the so-called hard left in the labor party that's concerned about the erosion of democracy um a lot of you would have tuned in on the board report meeting that compass organized and the people who spoke and uh, that and it's very important to reach out and work with other people in our local areas too um, I'm just trying to run through as many as I can. And thanks to all the solidarity greetings. Um, great points from Nigel about why we need to get press coverage. Um, thank you to our Bolivian comrade, uh, Claudia, for her solidarity greetings to Jeremy as well. Um, also, just some more shouts out for people donating. Um, as it really is appreciated. Thank you, Sylvia, Fiona, Rosalind, Juliet, Anne and Robert, who've just donated. Also, thank you to people coming in from everywhere including Weymouth, Colwyn Bay, Bury St Edmunds, Wandsworth, Woking, Edinburgh, Stokehaven, Brixton, Stockport, Blackpool, Cornwall, Chesterfield, Frome, Lambeth, Norfolk, Leeds, Brighton, Spain. Thanks to all our international people on the call. Hastings, Tannet, Liverpool, Henley, Hackney, Rochdale, Uxbridge, Argentina, uh, Islington North, Islington South, Luton, Southampton, Norway, Glasgow, Somerset, I'm not going to keep going on, there's too many. Bristol, Devon, Tower Hamlets and Timer. Thank you everyone for joining us and thank you for your support. Um, our next speaker needs little introduction to many of you. Um, when we wanted to call this meeting at short notice, we knew we could rely on her to get on board and tell us what was going on. It's our NEC member that we were delighted to be involved with getting elected. Over to you, Jess Barnard. Thank you. Thanks so much, Matt, for the introduction and good evening to comrades and friends on the call. Um, and firstly, I just want to start with a, a huge thank you to the Arise team, as always, who pull together these events and respond to, you know, these really critical events for the left and give us these spaces to meet. So, you know, solidarity to the Arise team, but also solidarity to, to all the members on the call and all the members who are feeling angry and frustrated and isolated and I just want to say we hear you and I hope that this is the start of these conversations and of course um, solidarity to Jeremy Corbyn who is uh, everyone on this call knows brought our politics to the mainstream and, and inspired so many people myself included um, on Tuesday last week it was barely 24 hours before we were due to meet as Labour's National Executive Committee we received the copy of the motion uh, tabled by the leader of the Labour Party Keir Starmer proposing the withdrawal of Labour's endorsement of the Member of Parliament for Islington North a man who's been elected to Parliament more than 10 times by his local constituents representing them for decades and the tabling of this motion I'm sure you've all seen it uh, confirmed what many of us already knew to be the case. Um, I'm sure everybody here knew this to be the, the case as well. And that is that the attacks on the left that we have seen so far just simply don't go far enough for Keir Starmer. Um, they want to remove Jeremy Corbyn as an MP, but not only that, they want to remove socialist voices and socialist ideas from mainstream politics. And I think we've come a very, very long way from the days of Keir Starmer harping on about party unity um, and pretending to support left-wing policy commitments as some sort of vote winner. He's almost unrecognisable from the man who stood to be leader uh, in in 2020. Now I know that thousands of people have uh, left the Labour Party and in a matter of hours um, NEC members including myself we received hundreds of complaints asking Keir Starmer not to do this not to take this action and to support party unity and many of those writing to us by email or tweeting us were really very clear that they felt that they would not be supporting the Labour Party anymore if Keir Starmer went ahead with this move um, and that is absolutely heartbreaking but the reality is the leadership are not listening to the members right now and it doesn't appear to be about to change and Keir says 
his his laser focus is on winning the next general election. I think that we can all all agree that that's a good thing and that's what the Labour Party has to do. But the issue that we take up with Keir is by what means do we achieve that? And the strategy for Keir appears to be attacking the left, attacking the membership, attacking Jeremy to win the approval of a very narrow audience of right-wing journalists, of CEOs, media outlets who want reassurance from Keir that socialists have been driven out from Parliament, socialists aren't in control of Labour Party anymore, and that the days of people-powered politics are behind us. And the strategy is leading to a dangerous situation in the Labour Party. It's one where marginalised voices are becoming even more marginalised and underrepresented. It's one where thousands of local activists are turning their backs on us and where we find ourselves as the Labour Party attacking democratic rights. We have to be asking what is going on and what has happened. And during my time in the party, I'm sure many people on this call, the broad church politics in the Labour Party has always been on display at local level you know there are members in our CLPs with differing views but we have always been able to unite behind our local candidates to take on the Tories elect local councillors from all factions of the Labour Party and work together and it feels like right now is a moment where Labour's leadership is rejecting our party's historic tradition and is seeking to turn what should be the home of, of progressives and socialists in Britain into a very very narrow factional machine and never in the history of the Labour Party has have we seen this kind of attack you know never have we seen um, you know we saw a few months ago when a uh, front bench was sacked for showing solidarity with striking workers fighting for fair pay never in my view has there been such damning and dangerous intoler intolerance from from the leader of the Labour Party and I think we need to be really clear the risk of this if it continues to happen if we continue to stamp out left voices this is going to create a culture which will produce a Labour Party that risks not being able to meet the challenges that the country faces. It results in removing from political life people that advocate for the transformative policies that we know we need. And with the Tories bringing through the PCSE bill and the right to strike being under attack also means losing the most committed defenders of civil liberties from Parliament and from Labour spaces. So a word of warning to Starmer, you know, look at the Tories. They have no answers to the crises that we face. They are turning on each other so often that none of them are able to last more than five minutes in Parliament. They're crashing and burning in the polls because people are sick and tired of them and people want a clear alternative, not Blair 2.0, not more lies and not attacks on democracy. So I will finish now just with a message to our members. And I know that times are tough and from you know judging by my inbox, people are feeling frustrated and demoralised. And I don't think that any of us have an overnight solution to this assault on socialists in the Labour Party. And I've seen people asking in the chat, you know, how this happened. And I think the truth is we weren't prepared and we weren't equipped enough. And we saw all too often in youth politics, in my time in Young Labour, the right were prepared to use our language and to say they were socialists to win votes internally. And that's exactly what Starmer has done. And we often see a lot of arguments about how we can respond. And I think the first and foremost, we need to show solidarity with each other as much as we show solidarity with Jeremy and learn from him, because this is not just about the eradication of one man. This is about removing the ideas that he stood for. And it's about removing the kind of politics that he inspired. And we need to be united by those politics moving forwards. So to socialists who have left Labour or who've decided to stay, um, but as Matt said, you know, focus their energy elsewhere. I really hope you, you know, support uh, grassroots organising, join renters unions, join trade unions, get active in your in your workplaces, build working class power so that when we have a Labour government, your voices fighting for transformative change can't be ignored. And for those of you that are staying in the Labour Party, as I hope you do, you are not alone. There are still thousands of us here and we have to keep fighting for democracy, for justice and for working class socialist voices in Labour. Um, and I hope you get in touch, you know, whether it's with me as your NEC representative or with uh, the organisers from Arise to get involved in their events, or if you're a young member getting in touch with Nabila. Um, the reality is when the right were defeated in Labour, they didn't sit still. They organised behind the scenes and we have to do the same. As Richard Bergen is always saying, things change very quickly in politics. So when that change comes, we need to be ready to grab the opportunity and fight for a socialist future. Thank you, Jess. What a brilliant speech as ever. And if you can't get enough of 
speeches from Jess Barnard and also be down for our Tribune in Arise annual Eve of May Day rally where we've got guests from Bolivia, from Ghana, from India speaking and Jess will be comparing that. Um, details will be put in the chat. A final thanks on the donations as well. Um, thank you to Kevin, Joan and John who've just donated. If you can donate, please do. Um, the money goes straight to organising these events. Also a great comment from Ryan in the chat who, adding to what Jess said, says, the left should be embraced, not full of eyed. We should remember the left is the source of many of our most innovative and progressive policy ideas. And that's such an important point from Ryan. Like on so many issues, if you look back, people like Jeremy and others in the 80s, leading on Ireland and peace and dialogue in Ireland, leading on LGBT rights, leading on why the Iraq war was such a disastrous mistake. And people do well to remember that and remember that reducing the Labour Party to a right wing set will not deliver victory or the change that this country so desperately needs um just a few final remarks before our final speaker for me um first of all thank you to all those still joining us um thank you to the thousands of people who've tuned in um as i've mentioned this event is hosted by rise festival and many thanks to everyone for coming along our key message remains today that we stand against attacks on labor democracy and that we will work together to fight for the rights of members and affiliates all the way please also take on board the action links including as i mentioned donating but also sharing and signing the petition and please do keep an eye out for motion and other action leaks in the days and weeks ahead. We say let the members decide, let's stand for Labour Party democracy. I'm now pleased to move on to a video from John Trickett who's kindly sent us this today. There are noises off aren't there, noises off telling us we should be out of the party. Uh, why? Why? It's our party, it's our movement. We helped to create it. We were there from the beginning. And we will be there whenever there's life and a set of ideas which you can group around about the nature of our capitalist society. So it's great that so many are on tonight. Thank you very much for the organizers. What I want to say is the following. What happened while we're here now is because when the people in the party, I call them the revisionists, you might call them the centrist or the right wing, doesn't really matter what label, faced a choice. When they faced a choice under Jeremy's leadership, <clears throat> one was to leave and contest elections, putting candidates against the Labour Party in that thing called Change UK. But some of them decided to stay, and we know for a fact they met endlessly, hour after hour, day after day, planning what they would do if they ever got hold of power again. And that's where we are now. And what they've done is set about attempting, really, not simply to remove one man, because this isn't really about Jeremy Corbyn. He himself would agree that. It's about every one of us, about our politics and the direction of our country. That's what this is really about. They decided to launch a coup, not simply against Jeremy, but against the whole history, the culture, the structures, the practices, the ethos of our labor movement. Let me just remind ourselves, our party is different, our movement is different to the Conservatives. The Conservatives had MPs, and because we were entering into a democratic century, what did they do? They thought to themselves, oh, we better have a, a party in the country. But the Conservative Party in the country never was really empowered to make any decisions, not really. The difference between them and us is is huge because we had a labor movement first think about it the cooperatives the co-op party the independent labor party um the other social societies the fabians the christian socialists the trade unions and all of the other complex structures which existed because Labour at that time was trying to permeate every aspect of where power was exercised in our society and continued to do so. The councils is an example, the, the elected councils, the parish councils, the district councils, the county councils, now the, the executive mayors. 
It was all part of a movement, a wide pluralistic movement to represent our values wherever power was ex exercised, including in the workplace. That is who we are. And along the way, we decided that we needed a parliamentary party, a parliamentary party which would execute the policies which were made at conference. Remember conference, not the PLP. Conference is meant to be the sovereign body of our movement. And within the conference are all of those different structures which I've just described, where it's a trade union, social societies and so on. The PLP don't have a vote at the conference. That shows you how significant they were seen to be. The PLP was meant to be the institution which implemented the program which the wider movement wanted. That is our fundamental structure. It's who we are. It's profoundly democratic. And of course, what we see now is an attempt to attack all those structures, to reverse our history of well over a century. It will change us into something which we never were if it was to succeed. I don't believe it can. You cannot change the constitution of the Labour Party and remove the trade unions, for example, uh, without the trade unions agreeing because they have 50% of the vote. And it's only if we decide to be subservient and we allow the leadership to get away with this that it will happen. I'm against that. I think that we have to make the argument. And this is about a profound transformation of our society. Think about this. Can a PLP of, let's say, 350 or whatever Labour MPs bring about the kind of changes in our society that we want? It can't. It can't do that because the exercise of power is so complex and diffused that it has to be tackled at every level. And so it comes down to a theory of social change. The socialists were right, weren't they? We were right in saying you cannot change society simply by passing acts of parliament, though obviously that's important. But the acts of parliament and what the PLP does is an expression of a much wider movement for change in society. And that's how I see it. Now, we can either choose to leave the field of battle or else we can engage. And I say we engage. And I know that everybody on this call, I guess everybody on this call agrees. The point is this. Let's make the argument. Let's engage. Let's show how this is a revision of everything which we stand for. And it's a doomed project if you actually believe in the nature of the, the gross character of capitalist society in Britain today and of the radical transformative change which is required. Comrades, I think we can make this argument. I know we can win the argument. It's who we are, it's who we've been for over 100 years. Of course, change will come, things will happen, but the fundamentals don't change. We are who we are. Let's get out and make this argument, and thanks very much for listening. Talking on mute is always a good way to chair the meeting. Um, <laughs> thank you to John for that video and also for everything he's been doing with her ice vessel recently, including the amazing Engels lecture that I would urge you all to watch. And um, as I said, this is just a start from us. This is just a beginning. Watch out for model motions. Watch out for more articles. Make sure you sign the petition. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Solidarity. <laughs>